Next up, uh, no other than Dr. Skip Rizzo, who is a legend around these parts, director of the Institute for Creative Technologies at Cedar Sinai, not Cedar Sinai, at USC. We want him at Cedar Sinai. He's best known for his work with virtual reality for PTSD, particularly war-related traumas. We're going to see a lot of stuff about how VR is making a difference in terms of measurable gains with our clinical population. We've got meta-analyses of meta-analyses, largest randomized controlled trial, VR versus traditional methods. It's all in a positive direction. I believe deep in my heart that this is an important area that we need to pursue to advance healthcare. I got involved in VR from my clinical work was working in a brain injury rehabilitation program. One day, one of my clients came into my office. He goes, Skip, this new thing, it's called a Game Boy. And he was glued to this thing. He was playing Tetris. And, and this was a guy with a frontal lobe injury from a car accident. And I couldn't motivate him with traditional methods for more than five, 10 minutes. So that's when the light bulb went off. I started bringing in game technology into the clinic, like the game SimCity, which is actually very uh, strong executive function activity. And they loved it. It ended up, I heard a report about virtual reality and that kind of brought it all together. And admittedly, the technology was very primitive. We're talking Stone Age and very expensive. The first computer that we worked on that could deliver VR was a $200,000 Silicon Graphics Onyx. The technology has in fact caught up with the vision. You can use a $300 headset. So I'm pretty excited that we have the science, we have the technology, and we have a very passionate development community in this space. I would describe the work of our lab as falling in four major categories. In the area of psychological function, like our work with treating PTSD, or in helping people with autism improve their social skills. In the cognitive area, with children with attention deficit and other clinical conditions, physical and motor function, game-based rehab, and finally, virtual humans with varying levels of conversational artificial intelligence. You can call me Bill. Welcome to Sim Coach. I'm a friend, a partner, a buddy. I won't let our vets down. This guy checks in with you. Teach people hopefulness skills by practice, you know? These are rocket science, they're simple things, but put in a format that's engaging that people want to use. And then finally, the thing right now that I'm really, really excited about is our work with our colleagues in Kiev. We just got approval to give our Brave Mind software code for treating PTSD in Ukraine. Now, the trauma that people see in that context, horrific things, tragic things, war crimes. And so we have to be ready now to begin to, to provide the best possible mental health services to the Ukrainian civilian and war fighting population. We tried to build it in a way that would model what we're doing with traditional exposure therapy. It's hard medicine for a hard problem. This is not easy therapy. It's gonna get harder before it gets easier. You're gonna be facing this difficult stuff that you've been avoiding, and I'm gonna to try to prevent you from avoiding it. Here, this little dial, okay. and I can adjust it back here for comfort. Wow. Okay. This is amazing. That is my first time with the VR, yes. So that was amazing how realistic that looks. And also you could feel the emotion when it looked very realistic and also looked like could be adjusted to Ukrainian landscape and environment pretty easily. In Kiev, we have our office and clinic currently supervising about 180 Ukrainian clinicians with emphasis on trauma therapy. Wow. Now, of course, with all of this large-scale invasion and, and war in Ukraine, we are expecting to have several million veterans coming back from war and, of course, unfortunately having to deal with some PTSD and readjustment. This is basically why we're here. Up there, and he's going to fire an RPG at you. 
We are talking about six to 12 months for developing first three, five worlds and starting to pilot it in Ukraine. It could be the same structure, just different architecture, mountains versus desert, the trench, the underground bunkers, the forest. Are you getting a little uh, motion sick or are you no, okay? Not yet. Okay. I served in the U.S. Army. I was part of the first group into Iraq. Okay, let's go back. You're on the road. Uh, child crossing the road there. First time I've ever put on a, a VR headset, the emotional reaction I had to be in there, it really takes you into the environment very quickly and very deeply. Oh yeah, yeah, that's, mm -hmm. that's 100%. I hope to be doing this work with, with some of the troops over there too. So as a counselor, that will help me when I'm helping the troops in Ukraine. There are horrific evils beyond what, what we can imagine happening every day. And these people are just the bravest people I've ever met in the entire world. And their culture is worth fighting for and it's worth keeping in the spotlight. I've been so blessed with this opportunity to be able to innovate with approaches that improve mental, physical health. And certainly science never sleeps, so we got more science to do, but we got a good rudder right now and we can make a difference for folks.